Welcome to our service of college prayers this week as we uh, mark All Saints Sunday. Our service of Evensong uh, this evening has some beautiful music from the choir and I'd like to say an enormous thank you again to each member of the choir and also not least uh, the organ scholars and Christian Wilson, our director of music. We also welcome today um, our guest preacher, Archbishop Josiah Idurufiron, who is the Secretary General of the Anglican Communion. It's a real honour and a privilege that Josiah is able to preach for us today, so we thank him from the bottom of our hearts. As we uh, gather together, uh, can I remind you too that our chapel charity this term is Christian Aid, so please be generous. The link is at the end of the service. As we still our hearts and minds, a prayer for this All Saints Sunday. Almighty God, who by thy Holy Spirit has made us one with thy saints in heaven and on earth, grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to thy power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who liveth and reigneth for ever and ever. Amen.
let us confess our sins. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises, declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to all people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open now our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised.
The first lesson is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, starting at the ninth verse. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the creatures stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here ends the first lesson.
second lesson is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, because they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you, falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in some way, in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Here ends the second lesson. he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
mighty God, who has knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship, in the mystical body of thy Son, Christ our Lord, grant us grace so to follow thy blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys, which thou hast prepared for them that unfeignedly love thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy designs, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and Heavenly Father, we desire thy loving kindness upon this, our well-loved society. We implore thy blessing on its members, who now serve thee in their several callings. Strengthen them, O Lord, to serve thee as thou deservest, and... As thou hast called them to thy service, make them worthy of their calling. And we pray for ourselves, that we may learn here to know and to do thy will, that through thy protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. O eternal God, the resurrection and the life of all them that believe in thee, trust in thee, and serve thee, thou that art always to be praised, as well for the dead as those that are alive, we give thee most hearty thanks for our founders and benefactors, by whose bounty and charity we are brought up to religion and the studies of good learning, and particularly for William Porter and Robert Jones, our benefactors, beseeching thee that we may so well use these thy blessings to the praise and honour of thy holy name, that at last we with them may be brought to the immortal glory of the resurrection, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is All Saints Day, a day when Christians all over the world celebrate the lives of believers in Christ Jesus in the past, in the present, and in the future. Our reflection for this service will be based on the first lesson, Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. And I will focus on verse 9, which I read. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. John, the author of this book, was in prison on account of the gospel. His commitment to Christ had cost him his freedom. Yet, he faithfully devoted himself to his Savior. In the midst of John's dungeon, God brought him to heaven so that he could see what God was doing and could tell the other Christians what he had seen. One of the things John saw was a great crowd of people from every nation and time. They were young and old, male and female, all robed in white and waving palm branches, associated with rejoicing and celebration as we are informed from the book Leviticus. Now, who are these saints? These were the Christians and Jews before them who had been faithful to God in times of trouble. John saw the faces of sisters and brothers who had given their lives in service to God. Those who had been fed to lions and killed by gladiators because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Here, therefore, is a multitude that knows no racial, economic, social, or national distinctions. Friends, God's grace extends to all the nations of the world. God holds no prejudices. He will save any soul that will come to him by faith. We also learn that these are virtuous men and women saved by grace, the promise of God to all who will come to Jesus by faith. The prophet Isaiah reminds us, Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And John, in his epistle, affirms this by saying, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, purifies us from all sin. We also learn that the multitude is made up of men and women who are victorious. They are celebrating the great victory that was given to them over sin, Satan, and the power of the Antichrist. Often people ask, why do Christians praise their Lord even in tribulations? 
if there was ever a reason for praise, it is the grace of God and the sacrifice of Jesus for our sins. His salvation is the one reason for praise that all saints share. Our circumstances may change, and we may walk through hard places of life. But if you are saved, your name is written down in heaven, and it will always be. God's protection doesn't mean that Christians wouldn't suffer. Christ's way is the way of the cross. God's protection does mean that God saves his people in the end, vindicates them, and provides a heavenly reward for their faithfulness. That is a reason for praise for singing, for testimony, for all the glory we can render unto our great God. And Jesus himself encourages us with these words. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And so my understanding of our passage is that it is God showing John his spiritual destiny, the destiny for anyone who gives his or her life to Christ. John was going through a time of tribulation, and the vision is saying, John, this is your reward, that John will stand in heaven one day waving a palm branch, a symbol of victory. He will be dressed in heavenly white robe instead of the drab prison uniform he now wore. And he will no longer hunger or thirst or faint in the heat of the sun. And God will wipe every tear from his eye. The vision, therefore, gave John hope here and now. Hope to face the days of tribulations to come and strength to see God in Christ through all that will happen to him. So John's testimony of all he saw has been an inspiration to Christians ever since. Today, we are here to worship our God in Christ Jesus and to celebrate. However, none of us here fears being imprisoned or killed because we profess to be believers in Jesus Christ in this country, at least officially and in the Western world. The world does not threaten us in the West with death. Instead, it entices us. The world is always trying to keep us from glorifying the Lord in our daily lives by creating loyalties and values that conflict with our loyalty to Christ. Our passage is a call on believers to remain faithful to the faith they profess in Christ Jesus. When we faithfully trust in Christ through times of trouble, God will reward us in this life. He will give us hope and peace. God will give us strength to live through times of trouble. And then, when we die, we will join the heavenly choir of saints doing what we Christians do best, worshiping God in Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for the whole community of Brazenose, separated across different parts of Oxford, unsure when we can all be reunited together again. 
we ask that our faith will be the bond that keeps us near to one another, to ensure that nobody faces the current crisis alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church across the world in all denominations, for the difficulties faced by your chaplains, bishops and all church leaders, having to adjust to ministering in isolated congregation. Lord, we ask for new solutions to these unprecedented problems, for perseverance of faith, both among people of faith and more importantly among our church leaders, and that we can all renew and express our commitment to you in different ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask for you for the touch of your healing on those places in the world experiencing hardship and distress. We particularly lend our thoughts to the people of Peshawar in Pakistan after suffering, suffering a horrendous loss of life, to the families of all those involved. We pray too for the people of the United States who this week will decide who should lead them as president. May the gifts of your wisdom and prudence guide their decisions, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we devote our empathy and sympathy to all those who are unwell at this time or struggling at this moment. To all those who are physically, mentally or spiritually weak or poorly. We particularly bear in our hearts all those students struggling with the secondary effects of COVID and isolation, that they will, be, they will be able to access support and treatment as soon as possible. As the number of people who have passed away as a result of coronavirus continues to rise, we ask that you enrobe their families in your love as they grieve, and we commend their souls into your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lastly, Lord, we pray for a semblance of normality in these troubling and turbulent times. We pray that we can all continue to fulfil our ambitions, uphold our passions for learning and growing, and share with others our goals. We pray for the safety of everyone in our community, but we also pray that in all of our efforts to control and defeat this virus, we commit ourselves to combating mental ill health and the ugly side of isolation from human interaction. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be with you now and amongst you always. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Thanks be to God.
Thank you.